All right, so let's get started then on Laplace transforms and inverse transforms. So this is, a, again, kind of a, a transition from where we were uh, with separation of variables. We have these problems that, are, like I said, are limited and what, uh, what you can handle with that method. And so we need to go to something that's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more flexible. Um, so how many of you have, have been exposed to Laplace transforms in the past? Pretty much almost, mm, let's say, 90% of you. So we'll go through what they are. Um, it's you know, good that some of you have that experience. I think some who are taking 764 have recent experience with this. Uh, we'll go through it still. Um, we'll have, like I said, a ho homework covering part of this. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go through the methodology. We'll actually solve an example here in class. Um, and then we'll get to this, uh, these other techniques that you can use for inverting or doing the, the inverse Laplace transform that are a little bit more flexible, right? So sort of a pseudo numerical technique that you can use. Okay, so what is a Laplace transform? Well, it's a, it's a way of taking a problem that has a time component to it. Um, it could have a spatial component and a time component, but for sure it has a time component. And we're trying to transform that problem from the time domain, which is difficult to solve explicitly, to another domain that's easier to solve. So we go from this uh, domain T to what's called the S domain. And the S domain is going to have uh, certain characteristics that make it uh, easy for us to solve those problems, you know, either as ODEs or as algebraic equations. Um, and then we have to somehow go back from the S domain to the time domain. Um, so I guess why does this, like, how does it help us, I guess? What we're doing is we're, we're taking a problem, we're actually going to integrate the, the equation for the, the problem. We're going to integrate the equation. We're going to get a new equation in S and solve that integrated equation. What that gives us when we integrate is if you have, originally, if you have a partial differential equation, you move from a PDE to an ODE, right? So it becomes simpler to solve. If you have an ODE, you move from an ODE to an algebraic equation, right? If you have an algebraic equation, you move from that to like a lower order or constant. So we're constantly like moving from a more complex problem to a simpler problem. And then we solve it there. And that's the whole point of this. Um, so, right, what does it say? Derivatives are with respect to time are removed by the Laplace transform. The ODE and T becomes algebraic, PDE becomes an ODE. Um, so let's go through the steps, right? The steps are going to be, there's basically three steps. Step one, do the Laplace transform to take the T problem and put it in as an S problem. You have to do that for both the ODE and the boundary conditions. So you got to do both, everything involved in the problem has to be transformed. Then we solve in the S domain. Um, we'll go through techniques to do that. And then we're going to take the inverse. So usually, step one and step two are kind of the easy part. Right? You, it's pretty straightforward to do this, to apply this transform. The tough part is usually three. Um, so that's where something like Maple can come in handy or um, this um, numerical techniques, or you go to tables. And we'll see what those look like, too. So let's see. Um, where did I go here? OK, so let's say we have, um, let's start with a kind of a generic example. Let's say we have a function, oops, a function um, in time that we'll call uh, some function f of t. Um, so I guess let's get some nomenclature out of the way first. I have this function. If I take the Laplace, um, do, take the Laplace operation on this function, would be Laplace operation or operator. That's going to be this um, kind of angle brackets uh, of that function, like this. So that's the nomenclature that says I'm going to take the Laplace uh, transform of that function, and then. When you do that, we get back um, the Laplace transform, transform itself. So Laplace transform itself is going to be uh, called f, uh, let's say you call f hat of s. So I move from a function of t to some other function that's related, which we call f hat. So just some nomenclature there. Um, the definition is as follows. 
So the definition mathematically is f hat of s is equal to the transform, the transform of f of t, which is uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of exponential minus s times t times f of t with respect to, oops, with respect to, importantly, dt. Okay, so what are, what are we doing here? We're saying I have a function, whatever it is, it's you know, cosine of t or a squared t or, or a t squared plus b t, whatever, right? You have some function that's describing um, a, an equation in time, and we're taking in that function times this kernel, this exponential, exponential minus st, and integrating that from 0 to infinity. So what in this is going to happen to t? Right? You're integrating a definite integral with respect to dt. Time goes away. And you're left with just s. So we're essentially taking our, our problem, moving it to this s domain, and kind of have to stop and think, like, how does this, why does this actually work? How, how can we do this? And then get any information back. Well, think about um, any, any case where you're taking the integral of a function. Right? You take integral of x. You get x squared over 2 plus a constant. Right? All the information about the original function that you did before integrating is still there. Right? Because you're integrating, you just add a constant of integration. All the original information is still there. It's just in a different form. So it's the same thing here. You do this integral, definite integral. All the information is still there about the original function that you have. It's just in a different form. So then our, our job is to solve this problem. Uh, once we'll see how it plays out, and then do the inverse. So this is the definition. You can go through and, um, for really common functions, you can go through and do this integral and then find what the result is. Um, and then people have done that and put them in tables. But for our, for our example, let's actually just go through a really simple case. So let's say our function f of t is actually just a constant. So not a very, very boring function. But let's do it just to see how it plays out. So we have f of t is a constant. Uh, let's take the Laplace transform of that constant. Uh, so that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of exponential minus st times c dt. Let's do this. Um, OK, so we take the integral. First of all, c can come out. So we're just taking the integral from 0 to infinity, exponential minus st dt. Uh, and that gives us what? That gives us um, minus c over s, right? Because you have to take the um, derivative of what's in there. So uh, bring that out in the front. So minus c over s times exponential of minus st. Uh, and that's going to be evaluated at 0 and infinity. So we can do that. That becomes minus c over s times what exponential minus s times infinity minus exponential of minus s times 0. So let's see. Uh, minus s times infinity, this becomes 0. And minus s times 0, exponential of 0 is 1. Right, so that becomes 1. So we end up with, um, sorry, positive c over s. Okay, everybody see how we got there? All we did was took the integral, evaluated it at from zero to infinity, and then we're left with c over s. So this is the representation of our function f of t, which is a constant in the s domain. So it's kind of a boring one. Like I said, it's not. There's not a lot going on. Um, it's not really clear when, you, when you'd want to use this. But nonetheless, you see how to do it. Right? And you do the same thing no matter what the function is. Questions on this? OK. Um, so that's the kind of really simple way that you're going to do this. Um, this you can't see, but let me zoom in. So you can go to tables where people have done this for common functions. Here's your function in time in this column. And then you can see the corresponding function in s. So we just did the top one. That 
checks out, right? That makes sense. Let's say your function was c times t. You do the same thing, you get c over s squared. If your function happened to be exponential c times t, it's this, and so on. So you get these different, um, these different transforms that just come out of, of evaluating that integral. So you can look in this table. There's um, sines, cosine, sinh, cosh. There's some uh, equations that become more common in certain types of um, you know, certain types of applications, I guess, certain problems that you might want to solve. So these are here. Um, there's other columns in the table. You can kind of look through this yourself. This is also in the book, right? So your function in t. So y y you, these are very specific looking, but they they do come out of somewhat common problems that you're going to experience. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the, the quick overview of the uh, Laplace transform. Um, there's a couple of properties that we should talk about, though. Um, and those are shown down here. So there's, there's the, the transform. You can go to the table to get those out. There's also these properties that you need to use in order to get stuff that you can transform. Um, so we should talk through what, what each of these are. The first one is this property that if I take the Laplace transform, so I've got these, the, the Laplace operator around the sum of two terms that are functions of time. If I take the Laplace of that sum of two terms, that's equivalent to individually taking the Laplace of each term. Right? So Laplace is the first term plus the Laplace of the second term. So you can like break apart problems. There's that like linearity to the problems. You can break them apart and do it separately. So that becomes really helpful. Um, if you take a constant times a uh, function of uh, temperature and time, let's say, take the Laplace of that, you get back a constant times the function t hat in s. So that's saying, um, yeah, all you need to do is uh, just take the transform of this, the constants carried along. Uh, other interesting properties. So this one you're going to use. Um, this one is saying, if I take the Laplace transform of a derivative in time, what do I get back? I get back this expression here, which is s times the Laplace transform, or the, the function t hat of s. Right? So this ends up being what we need to solve for, right? This t hat of s, this is what we actually need to solve for. So you get back s times t hat of s minus this. And what is this? This is your temperature at time equals 0. So by taking a Laplace transform, I actually need to enforce an initial condition in, as part of this transform. Right? So we'll see an example of that later. Here we have derivative of space and time with respect to time is s times the function we're solving for minus the initial condition at at uh, time equals 0. And then if you're taking a nth derivative, we just get back the nth derivative in t hat. So you'll see how these are actually used when we go through examples. Uh, but these are like the core properties of the Laplace transform that you're going to want to refer to and use. OK. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can also use, um, let's see. Um, this is a good time to look at how you do this in Maple too. So you can go to tables. You can use something like Maple. Let me just flip over. Uh, okay. So in Maple, there's um, Laplace transforms are available. It's not the most um, like comprehensive thing. So it, it's not uh, fail safe, like or, or foolproof, whatever you want to call it. Laplace doesn't do every transform. It does many of them. Um, but it's not a really like reliable way to solve. In order to use Laplace, you need to load this this library called intrans. Um, if you don't load the library and you type Laplace, it's going to say, "I don't know what you're talking about." Um, so you have to do that first, and it, it'll tell you if you've loaded the libraries. So the way you use it is, let's go back to our example where we just have a constant. So we'd use it by saying, I've got this function Laplace. Here's the function I want to put in. So this is whatever you have. right? Um, and I'm going from the time domain to the s domain. So this would be, uh, this executes, and we get back c over s. Um, you know, If we had something that was slightly more interesting, like c times t or something, we would see it, it updates to be the, the correct thing. 
Um, so that's the Laplace. We could do, again, here's a Laplace of this more complicated function. That should line up with the value in the table as well. And then if you want to take the inverse of the Laplace, you can do that with this function here. Again, here's your function going from the s domain to the t domain. And we get back what the inverse should be the same thing we put up here. So yeah, we get back what we expect. So Maple can handle a lot of this stuff. Um, but it turns out that you kind of have to get the problem to a point where you're putting in these little chunks. So you put in, you know, you put in c over s, or you put in exponential of whatever. You're putting in a piece of the function. If you try to put in the entire function, it's probably going to fail. So you still have to do the work to get it to the point where you can put stuff in. Yeah, Keegan. Mm -hmm. 